Hello there, welcome once again to Stewards of the Manifold Grace. My name is Joseph Bimbo Akinjoko. As part of our teaching series, Impact That Cannot Be Ignored, today we'll be looking at the life of Samuel, Prophet Samuel, and we'll be looking at the life he lived and the lessons that we can draw from it that would help us in the pursuit and the fulfillment of the purpose of God for our lives. This is Kingdom Inspiration Spring Center, where we provide you with divine light for your pathway in divine destiny. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege we have to receive your word again. The Bible says that the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding unto the simple. Lord, we open our hearts to you. We ask, Lord, that your light will come and gain access, transform our hearts and establish it in your purpose and your will for our lives for this season. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, there are five things we are going to be looking at in the life of Samuel. We are looking at Samuel, the son of Hannah. If you read the book of 1 Samuel, you will read an account of the life of this man that started his service to God from a very young age, from the moment he was weaned from his mother's breast up until he died at a very good old age. He is... Samuel typifies a man that lived his entire life fulfilling the purpose of God. And therefore, you and I have a whole lot to learn from the life of this wonderful servant of the living God. Now, the first thing you would notice about the life of Samuel is that he came to fulfill a purpose. He came here to fulfill or to meet a need. When Hannah, his mother, went before God, in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and cried unto Lord, Lord, not just because she was barren, but also because her rival, Penina, was also making life difficult for her and mocking her. She vowed a vow before the Lord and said that if God would give her a child, that, in fact, I think she was specific that it has to be a son, that she would give that son back unto God and that that son will serve God all the days of his life. What she did not know was that at that point in time, God was in need of somebody that would do exactly that because Eli was derailing his two sons that were supposed to succeed him were already completely off course. They were already doing things that they were not supposed to do and therefore there was need for a new person to come on the scene. This was a need that God had. And when Hannah told God that she was going to give God a son that would be able to do that, God gladly allowed his request. So let me say, God gladly granted her request at that point in time. Samuel came to fulfill the purpose. What was the purpose? The service of God the way it should be done. The lesson for you and I is this. We came into this world not just to mark register, not just to be born into the family of our parents, but to fulfill a purpose that God has marked for this season, for this generation, and for this dispensation in the divine scheme of things. God did not send you in the days of Moses he did not send you in the days of David. He did not send you in the days of Elijah. He did not send you in the days of Daniel. God did not even send you in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ's earthly ministry. He didn't send you in the days of Apostle Paul. He didn't send you in the days of many of the apostles. But he sent you at a time like this. He didn't send you in the 17th, in the 18th century. He sent you at a time like this where he knows that the purpose he has for your life will be relevant. And that is why he allowed your parents to give back to you at a time like this. If you had come at that point in time, you would have had no purpose because you would not have been relevant for that time. But this is the time that God has created you to manifest your destiny in. And that is why you need at this point in time to discover the purpose of God for your life and pursue it with the whole of your heart. God did not send you here by mistake. He was purposeful 
in his creation and his formation of you in your mother's womb. He sent you forth to complete a task. The question is, have you discovered that task and are you pursuing it with the whole of your life? Samuel came at the time when a purpose needed to be fulfilled and his mother cried unto the Lord and God answered that prayer sending him it is the same with you we looked at the in the previous episode we looked at the life of samson how he came in order to fulfill a need that god was seeing in the land of israel at that point in time they were under the oppressor and god sent a deliverer to them it was the same thing with david it was the same thing with daniel it was the same thing with Isaiah, with jeremiah even our lord jesus christ the time he came and the purpose he came to fulfill everything was in line with the divine agenda for that time my question to you is have you discovered the purpose of god for your life and have you committed your life to its fulfillment your life is by far more than a nine to five your life is worth more than you doing big businesses in different places in the world your life is worth more than you getting married having children building homes and doing different kinds of things your life is worth more than the jewelries that you have your life is worth more than the cars that you drive your life is worth more than the dreams and the big businesses the political office that you are holding there is a divine agenda for your life there is a purpose for which god has created you and that purpose is for this season don't ask god to do what he did in the days of elijah because this is not the days of elijah don't ask god to do what he did in the days of moses these are not the days of moses these are the days of you and he has called you to accomplish a purpose you need to discover that purpose and pursue it with the whole of your heart he has predestined you for this season and the bible says that then which he predestined he called and then which he called he justified and then which he justified he glorified he said he has called us unto glory and virtue he said that we might be partakers of the divine nature you are one that god has called for a time like this you need to therefore begin to seek the kingdom of god first that is the pursuit and the execution of the purpose of god for your life and you will see that all other things will begin to follow suit discover the purpose of god for your life and begin to pursue it that is the first and the most and one of the most significant things about the life of samuel the prophet the second thing is the process that he went through we see two major things about the process that samuel went through the first was that he kept himself from the corruption that was in the place that he was in the bible tells us in second peter chapter 1 verse 3 that we have received the exceeding and the great and wonderful precious promises of god that we may escape the corruption that is in this world according to lost there is corruption in this world there is corruption all around us and god is aware of it he said it even when the lord jesus christ was praying he said it clearly that he knows that we are in this world i did not ask the father to take us out of this world but that he will keep us in this world he knows that the world that we live in is a world that is full of corrupt things corrupt tendencies but he has given us the enablement and the ability the help of the holy spirit to enable us live a life that is pleasing and acceptable unto him in spite of the corruption we can escape it that's why he gave us his exceeding great and precious promises and caused us to be partakers of the divine nature you need to be part of those who will be called out to fulfill the purpose of god because even when you discover the purpose of god and you are out the enemy will do everything possible to see that he corrupts you to ensure that you are not able to fulfill that purpose the way you are supposed to fulfill it you are the one that will stand your ground remember Samuel was in the house with eli he was in the same house with hophni he was in the same house with Phineas, he saw the way these men 
were doing their things. He saw how Eli was nonchalant with the things of God. He saw how like a dicical he was with the things of God. Yes, he did not allow that to bother him. He saw how Hophni and Phineas were corrupt and he did not allow that even to corrupt his ways. In fact, at some point in his life, he said clearly to the people, the entire congregation of Israel, he said, whose ox have I taken? He said boldly to tell them that he did not take any bribe from any of them and none of them could find any fault in his life. Why? Because he stood righteously. The Bible says that the foundation of the Lord stands sure, stands sure, having the seal. The Lord knows them that are his. Let him therefore that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. You cannot say that you are naming the name of the Lord or you are called by his name and you are pursuing iniquity or you are engaging in forms of all forms of wrong practices that are contrary to righteousness. No, he that is of the Lord will do righteousness. That is what you must know. You cannot do things like the people of the world and expect not to partake of the things, the doom, the judgment that is coming upon them. We are the called out ones. The Bible says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that we may show forth the praise of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He said we should come out from among them and be separate and touch no unclean thing. That is the desire and the will of the Father for you and I. It is a process that is required for us to come into a place where we are able to manifest glory and virtue as God has ordained for us. We must therefore make sure that we do not partake of the corruption that is in this world. We can do it. If we cannot, he will not demand of us. He has made his Holy Spirit available unto us. He has made his word, his counsel available unto us. He has made his grace abound unto us in great measures. That's why he says in Romans chapter 5, verse 20, 20, that where sin abides, grace abounds even much more. The question is, which one are you going to lay hold on? Are you going to follow the sin or you are going to dive into the abundance of the grace of God to live the life that is holy, that is acceptable unto him? The choice is what you have to make. And I hope that you will make the righteous because it is a process that is required for you to come into the fullness of that which God has called you to fulfill. The kingdom of God is not in meat in and in drinking, but in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness is key, and therefore you need to walk that righteous path. We have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. We must therefore walk worthy of the grace that has been poured upon us. Hallelujah. Now, the second thing about the process that Samuel went through is what we see in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7. God was reaching out unto Samuel, but at that tender age, the Bible says that he had not yet known the Lord, neither had the word of the Lord been revealed unto him. Therefore, when God was reaching out to him, he could not enter into the fullness of of what God wanted for him until he was instructed or guided by Eli to be able to discern the voice of God and that opened up his destiny to a completely different setting, to a completely different dimension because he discovered first of all who God is and then he began to experience revelations by the word. Of the Lord. These are very important things if you and I are going to fulfill the purpose of God for our lives. You need to learn how to spend time with God to get to know Him, not just to read the Bible, but to get to know who God is. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it said, He that comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Apostle Paul tells us clearly in Philippians chapter 3. From verse 8 to 11. So by faith, he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, being made conformable unto his sufferings. You need to get to know who God is because if you don't know him, how can you walk with him? 
if you don't know him how can you know his voice you need to get to know him jesus christ made abundantly clear he said this is eternal life that they may know you the father and the one that he has sent getting to know god begins with you knowing the lord jesus christ because he is the express image of god he is the revealed personality of who god is he is god in a form that man could relate with he's the one that opens us up to god that is why he says that no one can come to the father except by him john chapter 14 verse 6 excuse me he says i am the way the truth and the life no one can come to the father no one can know the father except through him therefore jesus is the revelation of the father and you therefore need to spend time to get to know him and who is it that will bring you into this knowledge it is the holy spirit the bible says in first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 it says eyes have not seen ears have not heard nor has he come to the hearts of man what god has prepared for them that love him he say but he has revealed them unto us by his spirit he says in verse 12 he says for we have received not the spirit of this world but the spirit of god that we may know those things that are freely given unto us by god and the number one of those things that are freely given unto us by god is the revelation the knowledge of the father a fellowship a relationship with the father you having a koinonia a connection that is intimate with the father that brings you into a place where you are able to walk with him as you are supposed to this is what is key if we are going to have fellowship with the father knowing him is key not just knowing about him not just knowing what people are saying about him but getting to know him yourself it is possible for you to be preaching the bible and yet not know the lord jesus christ it is possible for you to be studying the scriptures and know it from genesis to revelation and yet not know the lord himself remember saul of tassos he was very well schooled he was very vast in the scriptures yet he did not know the lord jesus christ the elders the pharisees the sadducees they knew the law they knew the torah but they did not know the lord jesus christ the one who the torah was always pointing to jesus christ said clearly said ye search the scriptures for in it ye think ye have in eternal life say but they are they we testify of me they testify of the lord jesus christ and therefore you can only get to know the father when you know jesus and you know jesus by the revelation of the holy spirit his light coming upon the word that is given unto us so that we are able to come into a place of intimate and productive long-lasting eternal relationship with the father hallelujah so samuel got to know the father he got to know god and then he also got revelations from his word those two things were key to him being able to fulfill god's purpose for his life you too need to invest in that because there is no alternative to it if you are going to fulfill the purpose of god for your life you must know that god whose purpose you want to fulfill and you must know his word the pattern the plan the revelation of how he wants you to fulfill that purpose that is when you'll be able to do his work the way he wants you to do it and you'll be able to stand in a place where you are qualified for divine reward for the work which you have done praise the name of the lord now the fourth thing about samuel is his power the power that he used we, this is coming out of the third point we have talked about his purpose we have talked about his process now we are talking about his power okay sorry it's the third one yes we're talking about the power that he demonstrated and we see that clearly how he did it the power of god is revealed in his word because Samuel submitted himself to the process he was able to enter into a place where he's able to manifest the power the bible tells us clearly in first samuel chapter 3 from verse 19 to 21 that all of israel knew 
that God had called Samuel, that God had chosen him to be a prophet. And how did they know this? Because his word did not fall to the ground. Why did his word not fall to the ground? Because the word he was speaking was simply the word of God in his mouth. How did that happen? Because he got to know the word of the Lord. He got revelation from the word of the Lord. And then he put it in his mouth and then he began to speak it. And then God began to confirm it. Why? Because it's the God that confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messenger. You need, therefore, to know how to release the word of God. If you don't know how to release the word of God, you will not be able to release power because it is in the release of the word of God that power is released. The Bible says that in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Why? Because the word was carrying power. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 1, from verse 3, it says that God upholds all things by the word of his power. The word of God is like electrons. The charge that an electron carries is the power that the word of God carries, if you understand that. Just like an electron carries a charge, the word of God carries power. So when you release the word of God into a situation, what you are supplying into it is power. That's why he says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, say for the word of God is quick and powerful, that is full of power. Now it's able to cause a change, a transformation in situations. That's why when Jesus Christ would want to turn things around, he would look at the situation and he would speak. That's why he would look at a dead man that had been dead for four days and say, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth. Why? Because he spoke the word. That's why he would look at people who were blind from birth and say, receive your sight. That's why he would look at a child that is dead and say, Talitha, Kumai, and the child will come alive. We need to understand that it is in the release of the word of God that power is released. There is no other conduit that is reliable, that is effective, that is dependable like the word of God. That's why you need to put it in your mouth. That's why God told Joshua clearly, in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it says this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth you shall meditate that is you shall speak it forth you shall confess it you shall declare it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it say then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success the word must be in your mouth the word must be in your mouth he says therefore we say we believe therefore we speak See, having therefore the same spirit of faith, we believe, therefore we speak. You must know how to speak the word of God into situations if you want a transformation because it is in the release of the word that power is communicated and change is effected. There is no alternative to you releasing power through the word of God if you are going to be able to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Your enemies, principalities and powers are not going to bow to tears. They are not going to bow to shoutings. They are not going to bow to your drama and your theatrics. They are going to bow to the authority of the word of God when it is released and then there can be a transformation and establishment of the verdict and the purpose of God in the divine agenda. Now the fourth thing about Samuel is his priesthood. Now this is critical. Samuel was not a Levite. He was of the tribe of Ephraim. His father Elkanah is of the tribe of Ephraim. We see this clearly in 1 Samuel chapters 1, this is chapter 1 and verses 1 and 2. So he was not of the priesthood. When you look at it literally like that, but he still did the work of a priest. Why? Because God was showing you and I that you don't have to belong to a particular natural lineage if you are going to be able to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Samuel did his work as a priest and a prophet because the oil of God was upon his life. It is the oil that makes men priests, the calling of God that makes men priests. And 
for you today. You don't have to have a father who is a reverend or a pastor. You don't have to have had a bishop in your lineage. Has God called you? Step out and pursue that purpose and fulfill it. Execute that mandate the way he has intended and he has ordained that you should fulfill it. It does not matter where you are coming from. That makes us understand in 1 Samuel that there was a time in 1 Samuel chapter 7 from verse, I think verse 15, that the people drew near, drew near unto um, Samuel because the Philistines were coming against them. And Samuel took a lamb and offered it up unto the Lord as a whole bond offering. And the Philistines were drawing near, and because of that offering, the Lord thundered mightily upon them and discomfited them and scattered them, and all of them fled. And that even makes us understand that all the days of Samuel, that the Philistines did not come into the territory of Israel. This man was not fighting wars, but he understood priesthood. He knew how to fulfill the demands of priesthood standing between God and man. And God hearkened unto him and God released power. So even David was fighting wars, but Samuel was enjoying the ministry of angels in his own time. All the while, angels stood guard over the territories of Israel, did not allow the Philistines to come within that place. So there was no need to even fight a battle. Why? Because there was a superior authority, a superior power in attendance. There was a superior, a superior power on guard at that point in time. Why? Because Samuel understood priesthood. He never did anything with the Ark of the Covenant because that was the exclusive preserve of the priesthood of the Levites. He didn't do anything with it. He stayed in Ramah, not even at Shiloh. But the power of God was constantly flowing out through him over the entire territory of Israel. That is awesome. You too can do the same when you understand the mysteries of God and how to unleash it in executing the purpose and plan and the agenda of God for this season as he reveals it unto you. The second thing about the priesthood of Samuel was his intercession. You cannot be a prophet, a true prophet, and not have an active prayer life, an intercessory life, not a prayer life that is all about getting cars, getting houses, getting jobs, marrying wives. No, it has to be about the kingdom of God. That's why we see in 1 Samuel chapter 16 that even though God had turned away from Saul, Samuel was still interceding for him. God had to say, no, stop praying for him. Why? Because he understood his priesthood, that he had the duty to intercede and God constantly honored that prayer when he was in line with his counsel, his purpose, and his agenda for that season. You too need to develop a prayer life that is not about you. Learn to put the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. You are a priest after the order of Melchizedek. That's what the Bible tells us in 1st chapter 2 verse 9. It says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. He says he has made us a kingdom of priests unto our God and we shall reign in the earth. You are a priest. Therefore, God expects you to stand between God and man to back his purpose and bring to pass his will for mankind for this season. Lastly is the problem, the major challenge that Samuel had. You see, people tend to think that just because God has called you, and he's using you mightily. You don't have problems or you will never have problems. That is not the case. While the challenges may differ from one person to the other, it is important to know that as long as we are in this flesh, there will always be areas where we would need to depend upon God in. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, from verses 1 and 2, the Bible says that Samuel made his sons judges because he got old. And I made his sons judges in the land of Israel. And those ones were actually corrupt. They did not go the way they were supposed to go. They began to accept bribes. 
this was contrary to what their father would have wanted them to do his father their father was very upright but they did not do what they were supposed to do don't mock people when you see some form of flaws or inadequacies in their life don't think it's because they, they are not praying or they are not faithful there could be a number of things that be that are happening in their lives you need to therefore be careful yourself and learn how to show mercy unto people knowing that even at our best men are still men we all have areas that we depend upon god in so while yours may not be obvious unto others when you see one that is obvious in the life of others learn to pray and to intercede for them there was a reason samuel growing up in a place he did not learn how to be a good father because the examples he had were bad ones and that was something that was somewhere in his subconscious that played out look at your life look at some of those things that growing up you did not learn how to be good in and be rest assured that if you don't deal with them they could have adverse effect upon your own family upon your children as well samuel did not know this you know it and there are many also who don't know this you have a duty to pray for them and also to check yourself and see that those things do not manifest in your life the way god does not want them to there is abundance of grace but if we will humble ourselves and seek his face all our problems all the challenges that we have he will bring a testimony out of them to the praise and glory of his name this is where we're going to be ending today's episode i want you to take time out to listen to this teaching to meditate upon it over and over and it's my prayer that the light of god will continue to shine upon your pathway as you pursue your purpose in god in the name of the lord jesus father we thank you for your word that we have received we declare lord that by it we increase in wisdom we increase in stature and we are enabled to pursue and fulfill your purpose with divine excellence thank you heavenly father in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen thank you very much please remember to share and to like this page god bless you and see you in the next episode